NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, presents Aeronautics and Space Report. New Yorkers turned out to wave hello to astronauts Borman, Lovell, and Anders following their historic moon-circling Apollo 8 mission. For them, a job well done. Coming up next, Apollo 9. Thirty-nine-year-old James A. McDivitt will be command pilot for the planned 10-day mission. McDivitt's previous space experience includes the 66-orbit flight of Gemini 4. As commander, McDivitt will be making sure that when the mission's two manned spacecraft come together for the first time, that they do so smoothly and with precision. Following a recent training session where he practiced flying a lunar landing research vehicle, astronaut McDivitt had this to say about the upcoming flight. And what we expect to accomplish on this mission is to bring out the systems on the LAM, and we have a real good systems evaluation of the spacecraft. And then it'll also be the first time we'll be flying two, two manned spacecraft at the same time on the same mission. And we want to work out the combined operations because uh, when we separate these spacecraft, they certainly have to be able to operate together. We want to develop the techniques that we're going to have to use around the moon. And we're going to take the first shot at them here around the Earth. These artist concepts show some of the mission highlights. Here, the command and service module positions itself to meet and join up with the lunar module. After docking, the lunar module is pulled out of the adapter section. Twice, astronauts McDivitt and Swikart will enter the lunar module through the connecting tunnel and power up its systems. And here, the two vehicles separate. 36-year-old David R. Scott will man the center seat on Apollo 9. He'll be responsible for monitoring the systems and computer programs of the command module. Scott served as co-pilot on Gemini 8. It was then that he and Neil Armstrong performed the first successful docking of two vehicles in space, a maneuver critical to this flight and all future missions to the moon. Lunar Module 3, first of the lunar landing vehicles to be operated in space by man. It is in a craft similar to this that two men will actually touch down on the moon's surface. This particular lunar module will never land on the moon. It will function instead as a test article. Engines guidance and navigation, all will be thoroughly tried out. A rehearsal for the real thing. 33-year-old astronaut Russell L. Swikart has been designated lunar module pilot for the flight of Apollo 9. As such, he is responsible for the systems and computer programs that go with the four-legged moon lander. Swikart has also been practicing for a planned two-hour spacewalk he will maneuver outside from one spacecraft to the other, collect thermal samples, and do space photography. The Apollo 9 crew will be boosted into Earth orbit by the big Saturn moon rocket. Its five F-1 engines will build up liftoff thrust to over seven and one-half million pounds, ramming the upper stages to 38 nautical miles in 150 seconds. Apollo 9, shakedown test for the all-important lunar landing craft. Another stepping stone in the progression of events leading to manned landings on the moon. This has been an Aeronautics and Space Report presented by NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, presents Aeronautics and Space Report. It's called Mariner Mars 69. Mariner, the spacecraft, Mars the destination, 69 the mission year. Mariner looks like this. 
total weight, including scientific instruments, 850 pounds. This year, two Mariner spacecraft are being launched toward Mars and are expected to fly over different areas of the Martian terrain in early August. The closest pictures we have of Mars are those shot by an earlier Mariner from a distance of 6,000 miles above the surface. Mariners 6 and 7 will fly within 2,000 miles. The pictures transmitted back to Earth and received by these big electronic ears will show Mars surface areas as small as 900 feet across. In addition to the television cameras carried on the Mariners, special sensors will penetrate the Martian atmosphere and send back data, information that may help tell us of the probability of life there. Giving a brief status report, the director of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, Dr. William Pickering. And um, we expect to, can, to get uh, very much better photographs of the planet than we did with our mission, our first mission to Mars in 1964-65. The television system is a greatly improved system, the spacecraft is larger and heavier, and the communication system to the planet is, is uh, a, a very much better than it was uh, back in uh, 1964, and so far everything is working very well. Mariner Mars 69, two planetary explorers which will rendezvous with the mysterious red planet late this summer. Planes that rise vertically, the same as a helicopter, then fly forward like a conventional airplane. Called VTOL, they are a unique class of vertical takeoff and landing plane, craft that may one day play an important role in short-haul air transportation. This VTOL, the XV-5B, is one of several planes undergoing flight tests at NASA research centers in California and Virginia. To supply the lift needed to take off, hover, and land vertically, the XV-5B makes use of two five-foot diameter fans submerged in the wings. When landing or taking off, the fan covers are opened. When closed, the exhaust is directed out the tailpipes and the plane can fly forward at high speed like a conventional jet aircraft. Designated the XC-142, this VTOL was developed from NASA wind tunnel tests, which began in 1956. The XC-142 rises vertically by tilting up its wings and engines. Once in the air, the wing is tilted down for forward flight. Studies on this particular plane are centered around VTOL landings in terminal areas when there is poor visibility. From an engine producing 15,000 pounds of thrust, the Hawker P1127 VTOL literally rises and descends on a pillar of jet exhaust. This same engine can then push the plane forward at subsonic speeds. The P1127 is being used to study approach and landing tasks and to train NASA test pilots for other VTOL programs. Vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Research now to determine their future potential as short-haul intercity transports. This has been an Aeronautics and Space Report presented by NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. <laughs>